Welcome to chap sorry section 23 urinary system for biology 2402 lab. Uh, what's the job of your urinary system? Well, it filters your blood. So your blood develop builds up a lot of uh, metabolites, things that you don't want, you know, waste material, and you need to get it out of there somehow. Your kidneys do that. Every drop of your urine was once recently in your bloodstream. Uh, the, through this process, you're able to maintain your water balance. Uh, you can regulate blood pressure and pH. Uh, the kidneys are where this process starts, and this is where you do the initial filtration and uh, then a couple of other processes. The uh, ureters take the, um, the, blood, sorry, the urine to your bladder where it's stored, and then the urethra is where it exits. Let's start at these kidneys. They have a fibrous capsule, which is surrounded. The fibrous capsule is this outer layer um, right here. And it's surrounded by what would be like an adipose layer, which is going to go around it like that. But you don't show, they don't show it here. Uh, then you go to the cortex. The cortex is this sort of layer that goes from the outside to, the, to this part. So this is all cortex I'm circling right here in a red pen, which is the same color as a lot of that stuff. Just inside of that is the medulla, and I'll circle that like this. So there's the medulla circled. The cortex and the medulla are where you produce the urine. The next parts are just kind of drainage canals. So minor calyces are these little things right here. I'm circling with a major calyx being Bigger. So this is the major calyx, and this is a major calyx right here because it's a, you know, the sum of a couple of few different uh, minor calyces. And the pelvis is sort of this the main funnel down here at the bottom. So that's the and it all it all acts like a funnel, taking it to the uh, ureters, which have a transitional epithelium lining the inside, which is good for stretching, and a smooth muscle uh, lining the walls. <clears throat> which is good for uh, peristalsis, pushing that uh, urine down the tube. Next, uh, these blood vessels seem very numerous, but they go kind of up and back, right? So they're going to have the same names. Mm -hmm. Renal artery is right here, this big red thing, as we know. It branches into segmental, vein, uh, segmental arteries, sorry, right like this. Uh, interlobar arteries go in between the lobes. One thing I forgot to mention in the previous slide was that uh, two structures, your renal uh, pyramids are these things like this. Pyramid, pyramid, pyramid. And that's where those tubes from the, uh, the these nephrons run. In between there are renal columns, which are just these areas right here. And renal columns are where uh, the blood vessels go. So we move on to the interlobar arteries, which are these. No worries there. Then we go to arcuate, and arcuate sounds like an arc. So these arcing, arching looking guys, these are arcuate arteries. The next one are called interlobular, as you can see over here, but that name's kind of confusing because we already have interlobar. So I call them cortical radiate arteries because that makes more sense, and that's what they call them over here, right? They radiate out into the cortex, which we've already established. Uh, from there, we get to some minor, really microscopic details, which I'll show you guys in the next uh, next slide. And that's these three things. The afferent arterioles go toward the glomerulus, which is where the filtration takes place. And then those blood, those little capillaries hang out with that nephron structure for a while longer as peritubular capillaries. But like I said, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you those in a closer detail. Uh, in the next slide. Then we're just going to go back the same way we came, right? You see all the names are the same down here? Uh, cortical radiate veins, arcuate veins, interlobar veins, segmental veins. You may not see segmental veins uh, listed everywhere, but uh, they exist. You don't uh, even see them here, but they're there. And then uh, last, the, uh, the renal vein. So it just goes up and back, right? Same, same blood vessel names going out, and then coming back, just add the name vein to it, or replace artery with vein. <clears throat> Let's look at a nephron. So a nephron is kind of a functional unit that filters your blood for you. 
Uh, this right here, this blood vessel right here, is one of those cortical radiate arteries, right? So this is one of those guys that's radiating out into the cortex. A blood vessel coming off of that is called an afferent arterial, and I know it's small, but that afferent, afferent means towards, so it's going afferent or towards the uh, nephron or towards this ball of capillaries right here, which is the glomerulus. Once the blood leaves the glomerulus, you can see all these sort of purple blood vessels all over the place. Those are those peritubular capillaries with this thing being down here, the vasa recta. And I'll mention that later. So what does a nephron consist of? Well, it consists of a renal corpuscle, which is the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule or the, uh, the glomerular capsule. So I'll either call it a glomerular capsule or a Bowman's capsule. I only called it a capsule here because I don't have any space to write the word glomerular again. At this renal corpuscle, the process of filtration takes place. And that's where you basically push a lot of the blood, the plasma, dissolved stuff, small particle, particulate matter into that ball of blood vessels called the glomerulus. So you're going to, I'm sorry, out of the ball of blood, blood vessels called the glomerulus into the capsule. And the capsule's kind of shaped like this, where you'll have this uh, sort of cup shape like this with the ball of capillaries being in here. So the blood comes in, it squeezes through at fairly high pressures into the space, and then it, then that stuff, that filtrate is going to travel along that tube and go wee through these, through these uh, convoluted tubules. So proximal convoluted tubules next, and proximal just means it's close to the glomerulus. Here, uh, both reabsorption, the other two pro urinary processes take place. Reabsorption, where you take stuff back from the tubes, and secretion, where you secrete stuff back into the tube. So if you reabsorb it, you're putting it back in your body. If you secrete it, you're going to put it into the urine, right? So you secrete stuff you want to get rid of, you reabsorb stuff you want to keep. And you can see some items listed there. Then we go down into this big loop right here. This is called the, the nephron loop or the loop of Henle. And they uh, go down into the medulla usually, sometimes very deep into the medulla like this guy over here. Uh, and this is where you do a lot of reabsorption. This is where you're going to concentrate the urine pretty much, especially if you go into one of these really deep ones, right, like this guy, right? So if you have one of those nephrons working for you, you're going to do a lot of reabsorption. You're going to really make some concentrated urine. You're going to come back and go to the distal convoluted tubule. So it kind of goes uh, capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct, which is on the next page. So next page coming right up. Uh, collecting ducts, I just mentioned those. By the way, when you say the word duct, go ahead and put the T at the end. People think you're saying duck. Right? I knew a guy that thought heating and air conditioning ducts were actually spelled duck. But the collecting ducts are these tubes right yonder, which are going to do a little bit of reabsorption, a little bit of secretion, but mostly just funnel that urine now down to the KOCs uh, and ultimately to the pelvis. Now here's the two different types of, of nephrons that I was talking about. You can kind of see them. Uh, over there kind of represented, right? So cortical nephrons are by far your most common. The uh, corpuscles exist pretty far, pretty high up in that cortex, and they're your everyday run-of-the-mill ones that produce your normal urine. Juxtamedullary ones. So juxtaposing means comparing close to something. Juxtamedullary means it's close to the medulla, which is this whole region right here, right? This, uh, these um, arcuate blood vessels delineate the diff delineate, delineate the border between your medulla and your uh, your cortex. So juxtamedullary ones, much less common, produce really concentrated uh, urine because they spend all this time down in the medulla, which actually has a lot of urea in it, mm -hmm. which draws a lot of the water out. So, uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, let's look at the bladder. I passed by the ureters. Um, they're just kind of tubes, right? They kind of move it along. They pump it along a little bit, but, uh, you know, tubes. So here we go back to the bladder, which is just a bag, but so I don't spend a lot of time on it. 
couple of key features is this uh, include this region called the trigon. Sounds like the Triforce. There it is right there, triangular shaped area. And you can see that these are the entrances of the ureters and this is the exit of the urethra. Don't get ureter and urethra mixed up. Here on the right, you'll see an image of some histology. Here's that nice puffy transitional epithelium that you see. Uh, there's a layer called the lamina propria, which is um, mostly uh, um, areolar connective tissue. And then some smooth muscle right here, which is called the, uh, which is called the detrusor muscle. So the type of muscle tissue is smooth muscle. The name of that muscle is the smooth is the uh, detrusor muscle. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the always present adventitia, which is I'm turning off my phone, sorry, uh, which is the outer layer, which has fat and other types of connective tissue. All right, we're on to the last slide, I hope. Turn off the drawing, go to the last slide. All right, there it is. Here's some disorders. Uh, there's a list in your book that I think is eight long and I'm only gonna give you seven of them. I'm sorry, five of them. What a bonus, seven. Uh, you can read them. Let's go hit some high points. Um, ketonuria, excess ketone bodies. If, you, if you're eating a lot of fats and not a lot of carbs, like in a keto diet, you're gonna have a lot of ketone bodies in your urine. Usually no big deal. Not a problem, don't worry about it. I mean, unless it's really extreme or it could do to something else. Uh, pyuria, right? So if you've ever had a urinary tract infection of one type or another, with however you got it, and there's a cloudy urine, that's gonna be the white blood cells that are fighting an infection up there. Kidney stones, hopefully I never get them, hopefully nobody ever gets them, but a lot of you listening to this will or have. Apparently there's super painful crystal deposits in your kidneys that sometimes as they're leaving will kind of beat up the walls on the way out. So they kind of scrape along through those various tubes that we discussed, uh, causing a lot of lower back or uh, you know kidney pain. And gout, you may have heard of this. So gout uh, used to be called rich man's disease because only rich people could afford the food that gives you gout. Now everybody can get a lot of uh, very fatty and rich foods that maybe have a lot of purines in them. So that's an amine, that's a nucleic acid. Uh, so diet can cause it. It can be uh, genetic also or a combination thereof. Your kidneys actually secrete uh, uric acid. They can dissolve it, but if you're not up to speed on it, you're going to deposit those uric acid crystals, and oftentimes they get deposited in your joints, especially like your big toes. And apparently, it causes incredible pain. All right, make sure you look at the videos and study the photos and uh, come by my office hours and uh, stay safe out there. Thank you.